thankfully for Altona's sake, it was nothing. It's back with Kamas. Lia Shalamanov Trenkov, who's been the goalkeeper of the early minutes here, that has been a lot quieter. Well, a timely interception there from Stachevsky. Quick throw in here, looking for, but not quite finding Jesse Barber. Nice defending there from Edwards. Courtney Perkins ran into a yellow cul-de-sac. Macaccio wins it back. Can't go backwards. Turned back into trouble, but wins a throw in for the Magic. 33rd meeting all time between these two. Port Melbourne lead the head-to-head -head 18 wins to 10 with four draws. 4-1 in favour of the Sharks in the NPL era with two draws. The Magic have won just one of the past 12 league matches between these two. Their last win over Port Melbourne was in 2019, but they haven't won here at JL Murphy since 2003. Of course, they haven't played one another in the league every season since then. Altona, we know, have gone up and down once or twice as Liberto plays in Juach, who has a little bit of time and space here on the right wing, fires it into the box, away by Baker, controlled reasonably by Edwards. That's a lovely first touch from Barber to get himself out of trouble. And he plays in Emmanuel Peters, who might have to go on his lonesome here. On the edge of the 18-yard box, and then trying to play in Barber, who originally found him. Cleared away, but only as far as Dunlop. Kept it low into the box, so Driscoll sees to that. That's a starting 11 tonight for Port Melbourne that actually has two Barbers. Jesse, and then Emmanuel Peters, who is actually a Barber. Throw in for Port Melbourne opposite the 18 yard box. Deflection falls for Peters. Too much on that cross over the head of everybody and bouncing out of play. Yeah, that last win that Altona had here at JL Murphy back in 2003. But it was one hell of a win, 7-0. The final scoreline in that one. Shalomanov Trenkov hoists that one away. First season at Port Melbourne. One of their big off-season recruits. Has the height and wingspan. Every bit of an NBA player. First time, I must confess, that I've seen him in the flesh. He's a big dude. Stachewski. Oh, it was awkward for Gust. And then he's, he's done well to lure Fraser Dunlop into a sloppy challenge. Port Melbourne, we mentioned three wins, a couple of draws. Just the one loss for the Sharkies in the opening six matches. That was a way to Hume City, who everybody seems to be losing to these days. Made another managerial switch during the week, Hume City, you might have seen. Big winners last night over the Melbourne Knights under David Chick. 5-2 winners at Summer Street over the Knights. Opened the season, Port Melbourne with a nil-all draw on match day one against St Albans. Back-to-back -back wins then over the Knights at Moreland City. In that loss to Hume City. There's a foul here for the Sharks. They then beat Manningham United before that draw with Heidelberg United last week. I believe this might be Alex Baker on the far side who has stayed down after that last challenge. Slowly peeling himself up off the turf. 22-year-old. Spent time with both Bentley and then the Dandenong Thunder last season. Dunlop's been menacing early. 
finds Edwards. Into the area. Oh, and then Barber trying the cheeky back heel. It wouldn't have counted. He was offside. But that's what David Edwards is, Daniel Edwards, I should say, is capable of with that lethal left foot. I think I've called him David a couple of times now. My apologies, Dan. So Havdich with a long sweeping ball that's brought down by Edwards. Can't do much with it in possession that time. O'Driscoll is forced to retreat. Good pressing by Jackson Courtney Perkins. There's a chance for Fabrizio. Gets the better of Milovanovic. Well, he did initially and then the big centre half steps in. Sees the football out of play. Altona, their only win this season, came against Green Gully on match day five. Losses to Heidelberg United, Dandenong City, Dandenong Thunder, Oakley and South Melbourne. So there's another big challenge thrown in there in centre field. Guilty party is new Sahavdic, but Noah Langerak, our official in the middle this evening, keeping his cards in his pocket for now. Ball in behind there for Dan Edwards, but it's just going to run away from Courtney Perkins. All those losses that I mentioned for Altona, but they have scored in four of their five losses. And they've scored multiple goals twice, so scoring goals hasn't been an issue. They've actually scored ten through their first six games. To this point of the season last year, they'd only scored five. This Juach can't latch onto that long ball. About the goals that Port Melbourne had lost in the off-season. How about Altona? Starting with, of course, last year's golden boot winner, Jonas Markovsky. Leach couldn't skip through. The yellow shirt's ahead of him. It's with Bacaccia. The setting sun bouncing off the golden... Magic shirts. El Hawley. Edwards takes a tumble. Here's Liberto. In a good position. He's closed down by Kamas. He finds Duach, who pulls it back. And it's there for Makacha. And it took a timely deflection. And it's gone behind for the first corner kick of the match. Stephen Lawless wanders over to take. So just an early moment of staying alert and vigilant here for the Sharks. Be a left-footed in-swinger from Lawless. Puts it into the mix. O'Driscoll rose highest, heads it straight up and down. Port Melbourne couldn't really clear it to any great effect. At the second time of asking, Karmas does. Edwards a neat little touch. Courtney Perkins on the slick turf that was well irrigated prior to the match. Oh, Stachewski, a poor turnover. Edwards back in possession. Well done, O'Driscoll. Liberto again. That's a nice ball in behind. Juach has managed to stay on side. And the football didn't manage to stay in the field of play. Goran Lozanovsky down below us, the Altona manager, urging his lads forward. Both of these teams have been right down the bottom in terms of average possession per game this season. Port Melbourne 44.3% on average per game, that's 11th. Altona only just ahead of them in 10th. Apologies if you're having difficulty seeing through the setting sun here. 
in the southern suburbs of Melbourne. Just musing to our cameraman before kickoff, we can't wait for daylight savings to end and we won't have to put up with the issues on the coverage. But the setting sun causes, of course, they're one of the few teams in the top division, Port Melbourne, where their seniors actually play prior to the under-21s. If that weren't the case, perhaps we wouldn't have the issue with the setting sun in the first place. Throw in right on the nose of, right under the nose of Goran Lozanovsky. 50 year old who returns to Altona after steering them to promotion into the top flight in 2018. Very, very experienced manager. Oh, how well has Courtney Perkins done there? Outside of the boot, Emmanuel Peters off the crossbar. A chance potentially for Barber. It's taken off his boot there by Gust. What an opportunity for Port Melbourne. Courtney Perkins looked like he was a shark dead in the water there and then all of a sudden he was clear and Emmanuel Peters who has been in electric form of late the leap and the stretch header off the frame of the goal that's as close as they've come McCare back to his mate in Karmas Oh, that was a rash challenge from Milovanovic. Noel Angarak didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Makacha. Just a little bit too tall there for Lawless. You get the sense that they're going to have to be a little bit more tidy and thoughtful going forward tonight, Altona. A couple of cheap giveaways already. Driscoll rolling forward. It was a poor touch after receiving it from Liberto. Emmanuel Peters with the speed on the right wing. Bet John Stachewski when he lined up opposite Emmanuel Peters. His heart sank just a little. Wonderful experience player Stachewski, but the speed and dynamicness of this man, Peters, enough to worry any man. Did well there to find Dunlop. Port Melbourne in here. Rossi has to come and claim, and he does. Oh boy, Peters and Barber. The two Barbers closing in. Rossi got there first. Another poor touch from Al Hawley. No goals to tell you about here at JL Murphy. Port Melbourne have come closest. They missed a penalty in the opening minute of the match if you joined us late. Another half opportunity for Jesse Barber. A little flick that went wide and then only moments ago a header from Emmanuel Peters. That looped over the outstretched glove of the magic keeper Christian Rossi and came back in off the uprights. Off the crossbar I should say. Great work there from Fabrizio. Certainly favouring this right-hand side, Altona. Liberto was there. Joach snips in ahead of Kamas to the byline. Might have actually came off the hand there of Joach. In any case, it's a goal kick. Sharkies, this is their seventh match, of course, match day seven, but it's their fifth game at home already. Two wins and two draws. Won 12 of their last 14 matches here at home. Come 
come into this season as a little bit of an unknown, keen to get not just back into finals, but to the pointy end after making the preliminary final two seasons ago. Al Hawley's ball in at the near post. He is captured by Shalamanov Trenkov. He could not afford a fumble. And he grabbed it cleanly, which was crucial. Your preliminary finalists in 2022 under Adam Piddick. Lost that preliminary final here at JL Murphy in extra time. They were done in by South Melbourne. Edwards rolling forward. Not his best pass. Well anticipated by Stachewski. Who was happy to just get that out of play so that he could head back to his natural position. And Altona can set up again. Edwards drops it out in front of Dunlop. Goes backwards to McCare. Baker. Not entirely sure what Alex Baker's idea there was. Certainly broke the lines of the Altona back four. But just rifled its way into the midst of Christian Rossi. Stachewski, a known left back in this league, but starting alongside Aaron O'Driscoll in the middle of the back four. Good work there from Duach. Here's Fabrizio. Ball into the 18-yard box. It's away by Milovanovic. El Hawley is going to be penalised here. I think for a high, a high arm, a high elbow, to be more specific. Noah Langerak wants to have a chat with the youngster for the Magic, 19 year old. Started the last five now for the Magic. Altona youth player, he's been at the Magic since 2018 when he joined the under 14s. Here he is, back with O'Driscoll. Yeah, O'Driscoll playing in alongside Stachewski as I was mentioning a moment ago and the returning Alex Gust in at left back. Oh, Ilamanov, Shalamanov, Trinkov, I should say, a poor touch. And an even worse clearance than Uach has, I think, inadvertently got it back to Fabrizio, who was clearly offside. That was not by design as far as the Magic are concerned. Shalamanov, Trinkov, with a really poor touch. His blushes are spared by an equally poor touch from Uach, it must be said. Well, Hawley's been pickpocketed by Courtney Perkins. Barber in the middle. Too tall for him. Here's Emmanuel Peters. Lays it off for Fraser Dunlop, who fires it straight in at the near post. And captured by Christian Rossi once again. And not for the first time, Altona caught on the hop. Lozanovsky, the Magic manager down below us, having some words with the fourth official this evening Lucas Benicia we'll go around the grounds in just a moment and share with you what else has happened across the weekend in the top division. One game kicking off after us here at JR Murphy. Oh, Stachewski, gee, you left that late. O'Driscoll oh, was fouled. Speaking of late, a late whistle, a late call, I should say. But perhaps the match of the round kicking off at 7 o'clock in about half an hour's time. Avondale and Heidelberg United. Earlier today, Dandenong City beat 
Moreland City 1-0. Meanwhile, Edwards is on the ball for the Sharks. Past Al Hawley, in at the back post. Above Peters. Dunlop hits it first time. Barber trying to steer it goalward bound. And it might have been blocked by Aaron O'Driscoll, who's been one of Altona's best through the opening half an hour here. Other games across the weekend. St Albans beat Manningham United 2 1 last night. We mentioned Hume City's big win, 5 2 win over the Melbourne Knights. Hume City changed managers, we just keep on keeping on. Barber couldn't bring that one down. Green Gully and Dendonong Thunder out west drew one all. And the other big clash of the weekend, Oakley and South Melbourne cancelled each other out. That one finishing nil all. Lovely little flick on there from Sahav Ditch. It's now with Gust. Roberto on the edge of the 18-yard box. Just couldn't control it. Much of the frustration of Goran Lozanovsky. Oh, Makir is just hacked down by John Stachewski. And the first booking of the evening goes the way of the Altona veteran. Probably as professional and cynical as <laughs> you're ever going to see. But John Stachewski is the first one in the book. Incidentally, that is his fourth yellow card of the season. For those that un are unaware, five yellow cards equals a one-game suspension. Kamas, Leach, needling one in behind for Courtney Perkins, who's gotten himself into some very dangerous areas this evening, as is this man. Edwards plays it out off Sard Makachar, and Port Melbourne will have a corner kick. their men up to the the corner expecting a short one of course it was a short corner kick that cracked open Port Melbourne's first goal last week Courtney Perkins and Edwards do combine here a move from the training pitch Dunlop can't get it past Juach this ball going to stay in play Dunlop wins the foot race. That's a feather in his cap. Shalomanov Trinkov had to come a long way out to get that ball. It kind of just died on Dunlop. Courtney Perkins and O'Driscoll. Good work from McCare. Ran straight into O'Driscoll. Some willing battles going on in midfield. Here's Edwards. Bangs it forward. Got some lovely curl on it. Might have also been caught up in the breeze. It is a windy evening here in Port Melbourne. I'm sure you can hear that in our effects, Mike. Makacha turns away. O'Driscoll and now Rossi. Roberto and El Hawley combining. Liberto, that's a nice pass for Juach to get in behind and use his speed. That's a disappointing ball into the near post. Awkwardly cleared away by Alex Baker. 35 and a half minutes gone. Still we remain nil all. Now Tona are going to make a change here. It's an injury. I'd imagine it's Mohamed Al Hawley who has come from the pitch, he's replaced by Mateus Gonzalez. So a like for like swap at right back. As he makes his way to the bench, Al Hawley. A little 
grimace on his face. Makacha, oh, found its way all the way into the dangerous area and then cleared away. Now here is Emmanuel Peters on the outside of the boot. Barber, Peters gets on his skates. Barber's going to look further afield for Courtney Perkins, who just couldn't control it. That might have come off Gonzalez last, it did. It's a corner kick for Port Melbourne. Jesse Barber and Jackson Courtney Perkins just not able to make anything of that pass from Emmanuel Peters, who scored one of the goals of the season last week. I'm sure you saw it. It was voted goal of the round for batch day six. Absolute beauty up this end of the pitch to which the Sharkies attack. Courtney Perkins, right-footed in-swinger, lofts all the way in, looking for Peters. Now its way to Dunlop, who digs a shot out somehow, and turns it wide without taking a touch. Goal kick, Port Melbourne. As Christian Rossi is going over to have a chat with the linesman on the far side. Now Alangarak comes over and says, whoa, man, whoa. It's a goal kick, get on with it. Goal from Emmanuel Peters last week. It was almost like a side-footed pass from all of 30 yards out. It just curled and curled and curled and beat Heidelberg United's goalkeeper, Johan Sosa. We have had some spectacular goals this season already. And of course you could watch them all on the MPL Victoria YouTube channel. Oh, Liberto couldn't get it in behind the Port Melbourne defence. There were plenty in yellow queuing up. Had it got there. Now Port Melbourne coming back the other way. Gust goes to ground. Peters picks it up. In towards Barber. Deflected away. And now here comes Charlie Leach. Deflection. And Leach might have just left a little bit in there on Alex Gust. In the meantime, it has spiralled behind for a corner kick. Gus looks like he's okay. Just, just the run of the mill coming together that you see in this game. So another corner kick for Port Melbourne. Their first from the far side. And David Edwards... Daniel Edwards, excuse me, all the way in, knocked away by Rossi. Good double fist there to clear the area. So Harvditch, the first one to react. Not a bad ball from, I think that might have been Stachewski. Leach in an uncompromising position. Did well enough to get it to Dunlop. Gust looks like he's recovered. He's gone down once again, young Alex. <laughs> Asking for a foul. There are some Magic fans under the grandstand on the far side that are asking the same question. Those calls go unheeded as a throw-in. Closing in on the final five minutes of the opening half. A half in which Port Melbourne earned a penalty kick inside the opening minute that Dane Milovanovic stepped up and put wide. Manuel Peters had a header about ten minutes ago that came off the crossbar. Jesse Barber is in on goal here. He's wriggled clear. He's gone to ground. Rossi didn't bring him to ground. He just lost his footing. Edwards flips it into the back post. Peters is waiting for it. Might have used his hand. He did. There's another frustrating thrust forward for the Sharks. Christian Rossi, meantime, is slow to get up. The Altona skipper. Already had to make one change to Magic. Due to injury, we believe. The other players on the bench this evening for Altona. The reserve goalkeeper, of course, Hayden Brown. Jordan Delitis. Mateus Gonzalez, who is now out there. Philip Yevchevsky. Joad Rezai. And Julian Rodriguez. So a lot of attacking options. Should they be needed? Port Melbourne, they have Ethan Brooks, Lucas Burns, Mark Latsis, Andrew Mazzaruni, 
Owen Stokes as well as their reserve goalkeeper Evan Marco Giannakis. Oh, Barber has somehow brought that down. That was unorthodox, but brilliant. And then he gave it away. Gonzalez. Rossi. Spachevsky, Shark circling. They've done okay here, Altona, to play themselves out of trouble and win a foul. Altona are going to find a goal here. Where is this going to come from? This certainly looked the most prominent down the right wing where Al Hawley and Jatch were combining. Of course, now it's Gonzalez in at that right back spot. And Liberto as well. Here is Juach. No, it favoured Edwards who hacks it away. Baker. And now Dunlop. Oh, couldn't quite slide it in for Courtney Perkins. Gonzalez. Timely interventions. Karmas with the same. Karcha in midfield. That was flamboyant but effective. Lawless. Peters. Still going. He put one of the Altona players on the far side on his backside. Courtney Perkins. Dan Edwards, going to get behind Gonzalez. To the byline goes Edwards, nice ball back. Barber chesting it down, trying to get a shot away. Eventually he does, and again, Port Melbourne with a golden opportunity turned wide. Jesse Barber has missed one right and now missed one left. What an opportunity. Did really well to bring that one down, Barber. Did even better to turn himself clear and get a shot away amidst all the congestion. Has scored this season, scored in the match day three win over Moreland City. Probably should have had a birthday goal already, could have had a birthday brace, Jesse Barber. the final minute of the first half still it's Port Melbourne nil Altona nil oh, Milovanovic puts his body on the line comes back Altona's way Liberto heads it down for Juach who had options in the middle but a brilliant recovery from Dane Milovanovic sliding in getting in the way and forcing it out for an Altona corner kick so it was the first half that started with a Port Melbourne penalty in the first minute can the Magic score from a set piece of their own in the final minute, of course, we will get some time added on, you'd imagine. It's been a pretty clean first half. Not a lot of elongated stoppages. Left-footed in swinger for Stephen Lawless. Keeping it low and flat, and it's headed out of there by Peters. Helped on by Leach. Juach pops up on the left wing this time. First time ball. Shalomanov Trenkov just cranes the neck and watches that one get caught in the breeze and sail over the crossbar. In terms of timing, we might be a little bit behind. I'm going off the scoreboard here at JL Murphy which I must confess was not actually operating for, I want to say, the first half an hour of the opening half. Here comes Uach again. Trying to find a way through. Baker standing his ground. Shepherding the ball all the way out of play. Nice defensive efforts there from Port Melbourne's right back, Alex Baker. Port Melbourne press ahead here to find a goal before the half. Doesn't really matter too much now. Edwards has let the ball go out of play. 
readying ourselves for a couple of minutes added on at the end of the first 45. Well, Ivanovic ooh, just about lost it. Sahavdic won the football but lost the overall battle when he ran out of territory. Here's Alex Baker. Long and direct for Peters. Shoulder to shoulder with Stachewski. Decides to go to ground. And luckily made contact with the ball and saw it out of play. Otherwise that could have been a real problem. McCare. Nothing comes of that. It's back with the Altona captain, Christian Rossi. If you told Altona coming into the evening that they would give away a penalty in the opening minute but still be level at half time, that's a lot of weirdly specific context there, but I'm sure they would have taken it. Liberto, Akacha turning inside. McCare all over him. That's brilliant. Gonzalez looking to try and get it in behind from Akacha. Alex Baker plays it away for another corner kick for the Magic. Who are yet to really threaten the Port Melbourne goal. I'd be bitterly disappointed if they were to concede here in the shadows of halftime the Sharks. Lawless puts it into the dangerous area. O'Driscoll's header back into the mixer. Away by Macaire. Makacha. Sees the ball out of play. It is a throw in for the men in yellow. Ball hands to the pump defensively for the Sharks. They have a long throw-in specialist here. Gust, Liberto, he's gotten free. He's gotten free a second time, Liberto. But the cutback was cut out by Milovanovic, and that'll be Oranges. Interesting first half at J.R. Murphy Reserve between the sixth-placed Port Melbourne and the second-last-placed Altona Magic. A first half that didn't take long to burst into life. Port Melbourne earning... A spot kick inside the opening minute of the half. Dane Milovanovic stepped up and put it wide. Jesse Barber had a couple of golden opportunities. It was an Emmanuel Peters header off the crossbar that was probably their best opportunity. Altona don't really have too much to write home about, but they'll be happy in the knowing in the fact that they go into half time still on level pegging when it could have been very, very different. Brent Sternberg here with you from a chilly and very windy JL Murphy Reserve. We'll be back for you, with you I should say, in just a moment on the NPL Victoria YouTube channel. The score here at half time. Port Melbourne nil, Altona Magic nil.
Welcome back, everybody, to JL Murphy Reserve. We're set to go for the second half here. This match day seven clash between Port Melbourne and Altona. Brent Sternberg here with you on the NPL Victoria YouTube channel. These two sides locked at nil nil as we get set to go for the second half. And we do understand that there were some technical issues with the stream in the first few minutes or so. so for those that didn't see the frantic start to this match, Port Melbourne earned a penalty in the opening minute. Jackson Courtney Perkins brought down by Muhammad Al Hawley. Dane Milovanovic stepped up to take the spot kick and put it wide. And that was the best chance that Port Melbourne had. They had a few others. Manuel Peters header came back off the crossbar. Jesse Barber on his 22nd birthday today had two shots from the edge of the six yard box. One that went wide left, one that went wide right. So they had six total shots in the first half, Port Melbourne. None of them on target. Altona had one shot, one on target in the first 45. He's John Stachewski, the only player on a yellow card as we get things going in the second half. This is Daniel Fabrizio stepping into midfield. Uach caused them some problems in the first half on the right wing. Left foot into the box. Oh, shouts there for a handball. Noah Langerak, our official in the middle. Waves play on. Uach. Bit of a heavy touch there from Mateus Gonzalez, who did start this match on the bench, but came on to replace Mohamed El Hawley about 10 minutes from half time. So that is the only change that has been made so far. No changes made at half time for either side. Brent Sternberg is my name up in the gantry on a cool and windy night here in Port Melbourne. We're waiting for the sun to set to make the viewing experience for you at home a little bit more tolerable. One of those grounds here in the MPL Victoria that is awkwardly positioned. Port Melbourne going in search of another win this season. lost once in their first six matches. Altona have only won once. Looking to spring a surprise here at JL Murphy this evening. Here's Barber, had a couple of good looks in the first half. And that wasn't a great one. A lash out from outside the 18 yard box and always rising. Out onto the street behind us. I use my Google Maps to get here this evening. I can't remember what that road is called. Tona insisting on playing out from the back. O'Driscoll just hoops it down the line. Some of the messages might have been from Altona manager Goran Lozanovsky on that far side in the sheds at half time. Didn't show a lot of promise going forward, the Magic just registered the one shot. One shot on target. They did finish that first half with a flurry of corner kicks. Here's another yellow card. That's going to go to. Altona's midfielder Stephen Lawless who throws the ball away in frustration. So the second player into the book this evening. He joins John Stachewski. Lawless, the Irishman who joined from Wirribee City in the off-season. The NPL 2 best and fairest winner course now known as VPL1. 
gust gets it down for Sir Halfditch who's tripped up by Fraser Dunlop wonder if Lozanovsky wanted a little bit more intense and specifically creativity when entering the final third the pace and trickery of Paul Juach caused Port Melbourne some problems in that first half but a lot of their passes into the final third if it wasn't Juach running at the Port Melbourne back four the passes really let them down here's Stachewski looking for Juach came off his back Fabrizio going along the top of the 18 yard box here is Lawless just couldn't dig the football out from underneath himself and Port Melbourne get out of a tricky situation here's Barber turns and faces goal plays it in for Dunlop who's into the 18 yard box runs himself into an acute angle now turns his back on goal doubles back at the byline and I think he was looking for Courtney Perkins but it's safely into the gloves of Christian Rossi Port Melbourne had a couple of electric forays forward in that first half. And to Altona's credit, they've looked okay at the back. Sixteen goals conceded this season. The Magic, they get to keep a clean sheet. So Hartditch gets the better of McCare. His pass looking to recruit the run of Juach, but intercepted by Dan Edwards. His pass intercepted somewhat by Mateus Gonzalez and out of play. Here's Milovanovic. Baker. Dunlop. Oh, that's a poor giveaway. And Fraser Dunlop just took his eye off the football there. He was the one that was pulled by Nick Marinos right on half time last week for Mark Latsis, who is on the bench this evening. Rolling forward here is Edwards. Looking to play in Peters. Rossi comes. Rossi doesn't get there first. Now he's backpedaling. Peters for Edwards. Back with Peters. Being watched by O'Driscoll. Peters back to the byline. Into the near post. Away by Stachewski. Liberto. Altona survive. Stepping in. Karmas to win it back. Edwards does he go himself this time. Tries to play it into the area. Cleared away by O'Driscoll. Lawless. Milovanovic steps in. McCare loses it to Lawless. And now it's a three on two up ahead. Juach arrives at the edge of the 18-yard box, gets past Karma, still going Juach. Now Fabrizio fired it straight at Shalomanov Trenkov, and the best opportunity of the game for the Magic comes and goes. And there's a delayed yellow card here going to Dane Milovanovic for a foul in the lead-up. Noah Langerak called advantage. And there is and now trying to play it down, it's Lawless who must have been the one that was fouled. And what an opportunity on the counter attack there for the Magic. Uach did so well. He could have been forgiven for having a shot after he managed to dribble his way clear Played it to Fabrizio, who went for nothing but power rather than placement. And Shalomanov Trenkov had a reasonably comfortable save to make in the end. Stephen Lawless is good to go, good to resume. Keeping in mind as well, as we mentioned, Altain have already made one change, so they only have two more substitution windows to use Jordan Delitis, Philip Yevchevsky, Joad Rezai and Julian Rodriguez the outfield players on the bench for Altone this evening the reserve goalkeeper is Hayden Brown 
the sun sets over Port Melbourne this evening and thank goodness for that here's McCare Dunlop back with Baker Oh, Baker running himself into a bind and then just bangs it forward for Dunlop to pursue. It'll sit up for the winger here for Port Melbourne. First time ball. Oh, he's lucky at least to get a corner kick out of this one. Fraser Dunlop out off John Stachewski. First corner kick of the second half for Port Melbourne. And over comes Dan Edwards like the corner kicks to be in swiggers Port Melbourne with the left footed Dan Edwards or the right footed Jackson Courtney Perkins into the near post by Edwards it's way by Sir Half Ditch and we will will we do it again or is it a throw in it's a throw in right next to the corner flag as Nick Marinos tells a couple of his troops to warm up on the bench Looks like we're going to have Lucas Burns and Mark Latsis joining the fray shortly. Burns, who has been in the starting 11 the past few weeks, but back to the bench tonight. Awkward bounce there for Lawless. Baker and Fabrizio doing the tango. Leach, nice pass. The barber. Couldn't get past the lunging. The desperate John Stachewski. Can we remind you, he's on a yellow card. Got to be careful in those defensive duels. McCutchale trying to pick it up in midfield again here. Duatch is running at Edwards. The electric one for the Magic. Here's Gonzalez. Gonzalez in at the near post. Fabrizio uh, beaten to it by Baker. Cleared but only as far as McCutchale. Ball in. Fabrizio managed to get his head on that one, but he didn't know an awful lot about it. And claimed by Shalomanov Trankov. It's going to be a triple change, in fact, for the Sharks. It will be Burns and Lattis to enter the fray, and also the Irishman Owen Stokes. Wait and see how this changes the Sharks' formation. It's Liberto. Going to cut inside. Right in the challenge of Karmas. Baker beats the half ditch to the air ball. Great wake work there by Courtney Perkins who runs away from Alexander Gust. Still going, Courtney Perkins. He's got Peters for company. Courtney Perkins goes himself and can't bend it up into the top left hand corner. And with that, we will ring the changes down below. It'll be Lucas Burns to replace Jesse Barber, so there will be no birthday goal for Jesse he had a couple of chances though Owen Stokes will replace Macare Macare Lucas Burns is coming on as well for Fraser Dunlop Lawless, good release. Fabrizio Shalomano Trinkov has to come. He brings down Fabrizio. What colour card is this? Noah Langarak says red. Fabrizio brought down by Shalomano Trinkov. And Shalomano Trinkov sent off. And just seconds after the Sharks made a triple substitution, they're going to have to make another as the goalkeeper rips his gloves off in frustration. That was a beautiful ball in behind for Fabrizio. Shalomanov Trenkov had to come. Fabrizio drew the contact. And the Port Melbourne goalkeeper has been given his marching orders. And so now, Port Melbourne will go to their reserve goalkeeper, Evan Marco Giannakis, who will come on for his first appearance of the season. And the question is, who do they sacrifice the Sharks? 
And they'll have to navigate the final half an hour or so with 10 men. Port Melbourne's first red card of the season. And it looks like it's going to be the man who missed the penalty in the opening minutes of this one, Dane Milovanovic, who is brought off for Evan Marco Giannakis, the reserve goalkeeper for Port Melbourne, 27 year old. Returns to Port Melbourne this season after being with Hume City. Appearance number 13, his first of the season. Well, how about the events of this match? From the missed penalty, all the missed opportunities they've had, Port Melbourne. Makacha in at the back post. Marco Giannakis comes out and claims awkwardly. Now Eltona are in a prime position here with a one-man advantage. It's interesting though in this caper, it doesn't always translate to a team dominating or even winning as Peters has pulled back here for a foul. Melbourne who played against 10 men for the final 10 or so minutes last week that's a lovely ball to Latsis who's into the 18 yard box the cutback, the cut out by Stachewski Peters was there and arriving quickly Stachewski has been sensational in his new role at the heart of defence Sahavdic well the dangerous Fabrizio there again but the ball just in behind but they are growing Ever confident, Altona, with each passing minute. Sensing perhaps their first win over Port Melbourne since 2019 and their first win here in Port Melbourne in 21 years. Alex Baker thinks this is a free kick. It is, in fact, a throw-in, says referee Noah Langerak. We're just back on that red card. Our referee Noah Langerak has obviously deemed that that was Elia Shalamano Trankov denying what would have been a clear goal scoring opportunity. It was certainly the only player between Daniel Fabrizio and the goal. And there'll be plenty of debate on social media about that one, I'm sure. Here comes Mateus Gonzalez. Uses the overlap here of Buach. Can't get the cross past Dan Edwards. Port Melbourne have made a little bit of a mess here of trying to get out from their defensive third. Eventually it has worked out okay. Stokes getting involved. Charlie Leach. Now it's Port Melbourne on the attack. Peters. Decent first touch. The second touch was poor. Stachewski hoists it away. Well, it's going to be up and back for the final 25 minutes or so. There's going to be some tired boys by the end of it. Courtney Perkins. Look and see Emmanuel Peters skipping past the couple. Courtney Perkins. Some venom on the shot, but it was blocked. Here comes Gust for Altona. Fabrizio, delightful first touch. Sahavdic is in ahead of Baker. Sahavdic into the 18 yard box. It's well done by Baker, and Marco Giannakis can't stop it from going behind for a corner kick. As Altona have a couple of substitutes warming up down below us. Trotting over his Saab uh, Makarcha to send this one in. The Magic don't commit all of their troops forward. It's taken short here to Gust, who floats it on in. Header found its way to Lawless. Blocked, still alive here for the Magic. Lawless again. Fabrizio managed to stay onside. 
in towards the back post. So half ditch couldn't get the head of goal with bound. And it's out harmlessly for a goal kick. I'm not sure what is wrong with that end of the ground, but there's been three or four golden opportunities for both teams inside the six yard box. Just refused to go in. I believe it's Jawad Rezai who's warming up down below us. A winger for Altona who has been in good form, just the type of player that Lozanovsky would like to bring into this one. Port Melbourne nil, Altona nil. But if you've only just joined us, Port Melbourne only a matter of moments ago had their goalkeeper Alaya Shalomanov Trenkov red carded. So Port Melbourne are down to 10. The Magic are coming again, didn't quite spill for Fabrizio, it's away by Karmas. Which side of the corner flag does it go, it's out for a throw in. Makacha. Gust, dueling with Courtney Perkins. Makacha. Working the triangle well, Liberto, Gust. Good challenge, well done, Latsis. And a nice ball for Peters, who turns and burns. Trying to get past Makacha, just held him up long enough. And then a foul goes the way of John Stachewski and Emmanuel Peters is irate. As is Nick Marinos. It has to be said, that was well done by Makacha. Grab Emmanuel Peters, he just sort of checked him long enough to allow the oncoming Sharks forward to lose the ball. Coming here tonight, Altona, they would have taken a nil all draw. Wonder if their mindset has changed at all. You'd imagine it would have. Lawless with a, an ambitious attempt that has gone away from goal. Latsis. For Port Melbourne. Couldn't find Courtney Perkins. It's been an uncomfortable night for the Sharks, really, from the opening minute. Dane Milovanovic missed that penalty. In the second minute of the match, he was the one that was then sacrificed a few minutes ago as they had to bring on their reserve goalkeeper when Shalomanov Trenkov was red carded. That happened literally only 10 seconds after they'd made a triple substitution. As Liberto wins it back in midfield for the Magic. Juac can't play in the pass for Sahavdic. Latsis is closed down by Lawless. Lawless is certain it's a throw in for the Magic. And Linesman on this side says, nah. -uh. Still the would-be Altona substitutes warm-up. Fabrizio. Baker got his foot even, saw it out of touch. This season, so far, Altona, as we mentioned earlier, seven of them have come in the second half of matches. McCarcher, I think that was a little dummy, and now Gonzalez from way downtown. And it bounces comfortably for Marco Giannakis. Courtney Perkins. Peters. Burns. What a beautiful first time ball for Edwards. by Liberto. Altona certainly looked a better team since that red card. Early ball looking for Peters. Too much on it and just a little bit frustrated. Emmanuel Peters throwing his arms out. Just asking the question. I'm tall and I'm quick, but what am I supposed to do with that?
Chesky waltzes forward. Just can't quite find Liberto. Alex Baker's had a good second half. Stepping in in Port Melbourne's moments of need. O'Driscoll. Makacha. Directing traffic with the ball at his foot. Lawless goes straight past McCare. That's just the timely intervention. Karmas rolls forward. Peters, Karmas continues the run. Emmanuel Peters a little isolated out there and he knows that he has to retreat. Stokes with a full pitch. Lateral pass to Latsis. He keeps it going forward for Courtney Perkins. To the byline. Ostachevsky at the stretch and then Latsis has inexplicably... Had it cannon off the inside of the left upright and out. And Port Melbourne must be thinking, we're not going to score tonight. Marco Latsis hit it beautifully. That must have gone right along the goal line and jumped out. Goal kick. Altona ready to inject Jad Rezai into the match. a double change for the Magic when it occurs. O'Driscoll lofting. Fabrizio oh, will get it up. The Latsis didn't deal with it. Fabrizio and eventually away by Karmas. Lucas Burns. Stokes calling for it but he was also almost standing on his boot. Here comes Charlie Leach. Port Melbourne on the burst. Courtney Perkins will shape to shoot with his left. It's taken a touch and trickled out for a corner kick when do the Magic make these changes looks like it's going to be Rezai and young Philip Yevchevsky entering the fray meanwhile Ben Edwards trots over to take the corner kick and Port Melbourne have been playing the last 10-12 minutes or so with a one man disadvantage Toner have had a couple of good looks in that time, but Port Melbourne had the best one a moment ago when Lats has hit the woodwork. Edwards just hoists it in. It's kept alive by Karmas. There were shouts in there for a handball, but the flag is up. And the pressure valve released. Paul Gohan Lozanovsky and his Altona side. It's going to be Nathan Liberto to be replaced by young Philip Yevchevsky. This will be just his second appearance of the season. Come off the bench match day two against Andenong City. And Gerard Rezai is going to replace Nusa Havdic. Now, Gerard Rezai, I've mentioned a couple of times, has been in good form. He scored three goals this season, including a brace in Altona's only win against Green Gully a few weeks back. Just the sort of player that you want to be bringing in to the contest right now. Still this match, somehow, some way, is nil all. We've had a missed penalty. Port Melbourne have hit the woodwork twice. We've had about four instances where players have missed from the six yard box. It's crazy. Latsis, Stokes on the turn. He's got Courtney Perkins as a nice ball. That's great anticipation from the Magic captain, Rossi. The quick release. Gonzalez. Heading for the final 15 minutes. Fabrizio and Karmas. Karmas playing the percentages and seeing it out of play. Gonzalez dancing with a couple of sharks. The 
ball goes out of play and it's gone the Sharks' way. Alluded to the long, long losing streak that they have here that JL Murphy, Altona haven't won here in 21 years. I can't imagine they've been in a better position than what they find themselves in right now. Lawless loses out to Courtney Perkins who just hacks it away. 15 previous trips here to JL Murphy, just two wins. Gust. Ball's gone through the legs of Latsis who bailed out by Alex Baker. Latsis has turned in field and looks to play it for Peters. It took a touch off Sachevsky. Pulls kindly for Courtney Perkins. Peters is in the box. Oh, and it's almost gone in. He didn't know much about that at all, Courtney Perkins. And again, Port Melbourne have been denied by the frame of the goal. And if this stays nil-nil or if they lose, Port Melbourne will take down the goal frames and burn them. Christian Rossi scrambling on the goal line. It was a cross-come shot. Once again, they've rattled the inside of that left upright, the Sharkies. Wonder what their expected goals would be for this match. Hit the woodwork three times and a missed penalty. As Noel Angrak pulls this one back for a foul. Well, it's a long and winding season in the NPL Victoria. Teams are destined to have nights like these, as frustrating as they are. But Port Melbourne just have to put all of it behind them, just find that one opportunity, score that one goal. Forget about it. Stokes can't get it past the Chevsky. Back now for Owen Stokes. Nice first time delivery. And the header came from, I think that was Lat Latsis who couldn't get a goal with bound. Gonzalez. Chevsky passes it back to his mate in O'Driscoll. Port Melbourne working their way on top after that little flurry from Altona. He is gassed. He's gone for glory there. Can't do what Jackson Courtney Perkins almost did a couple of moments ago. Evan Marco Giannakis alert. Frustration from <laughs> Alex Baker, Latsis. Peters on the turn. Courtney Perkins, who's had one hell of a night at the office. The step over, into the box, the cutback, and a long, long last. Owen Stokes was there. Owen got them going. And finally, Port Melbourne have scored. After a missed penalty and four times hitting the woodwork, the Sharkies leader, J.L. Murphy. That's exactly what we were saying. One moment. One moment for Owen Stokes to tumble at home. Wasn't pretty. As if the Sharkies care. The Stokes' first goal in the red and blue of Port Melbourne. And they have the lead. The 10-man Port Melbourne won. Altona Magic nil. And now the Magic... Chasing the game again. Not that they were chasing the game, but those productive few minutes that they had after the Sharks goalkeeper was sent off. Port Melbourne have just sprung into top gear.
Heading for the final 10 minutes. Stachewski. And Gust. And a decent ball in. It's too high for Fabrizio. Rezai trying to go with the volley. Back now with Gust. Still had good numbers in the box, but charged down by Burns. Well, Latsis has left it behind. Burns is there for cover. Leach. Peters. Now Edwards. Sharks on the march again. Well done, Aaron O'Driscoll. Got his boot in the way. Peters and Courtney Perkins were lurking. Though they, they had to weather a little bit of a storm there after going down to Ted Port Melbourne, but they almost look like they've been reinvigorated by that red card. The last five, ten minutes, they've been terrific. So there's another yellow card coming out here. And that's going the way of Charlie Leach. Running out of time, Altona now to try and turn this one around and get their first win here in 21 years. Is it about to tick over to 22? Stachewski's picked out Gust. First time cross, it's turned you at away from goal. And played away by the Sharks. Peters coughs it up. Makacha. Uach. Using the speed to get it behind Edwards and then fires it in at the near post. That's good work by the young goalkeeper, Evan Marco Giannakis. So not a young man, 27 year old, but young of experience. Always difficult for a goalkeeper to come into the match in circumstances where the starter has been sent off. Not something that you see a lot. Something that, of course, from the team's point of view, you hope never to see. Being the backup goalkeeper in a football team should have been the easiest gig of all. Oh, Edwards, a timely back heel. Work from Stokes, beautifully brought down by Latsis. He's been sensational since coming on. He was one of the triple change for Port Melbourne that happened just seconds before the goalkeeper was sent off. Stachewski goes down. There's no foul. Altona play on. Uach will run at Karmas. Will get behind Karmas. Baker's got to close down the angle. He does. And it's out and behind for another Altona corner kick. Even though they've had the one-man advantage for a little while, Altona, haven't really got on to create that one chance that they need. This one's in at the back post. O'Driscoll heads it down. Edwards is there to escort it back out for a goal kick this time. Ethan Brooks is going to be brought on by Mick Marinos. Some more speed out wide added, you would imagine. In fact, he's going to replace Emmanuel Peters, so perhaps he's going to be the big body that they want up front to shut things down. Been good tonight, Emmanuel Peters. He was the first one to hit the woodwork the first half. He was hitting the woodwork before it was cool. Been in good goal scoring form but not tonight for Emmanuel Peters. Picked up in midfield. Oh, it's a good battle but a foul in there. Burns tripped up Yuchevsky. 
like the game of Alex Gust as well at left back for the Magic. Lawless can turn and go. Once again, can't get it past Alex Baker. Here is Ethan Brooks, his first moment in the match is a turnover. Rezai and Gust. And then stepping in nicely there was Lucas Burns. Got it away from Lawless. Altona continue to press. Stachewski signalling to Aaron O'Driscoll. Go. Gust. Rezai. Nice return ball for Gust, but Brooks got in the way. And sees it out. Upping the ante and the urgency here. Goran Lozanovsky's men. It's good work again in there by Lucas Burns. Trying to crash his way through Fabrizio. Oh, the Brooks hack worked out all right. Burns closed down by Lawless. Dispossessed. Gust at the stretch. Now Rezai trying to cut back into his right boot. Lost it momentarily. Still going, Juard Rezai. Still going. Oh, and then all the way to Fabrizio with the audacious back heel. Didn't work. Still a chance, perhaps. Uach. Here's Gonzalez. Yamchevsky. O'Driscoll. Fabrizio on the turn and going to ground. Just had too many of their players too close together there, the Magic. Yovchevsky out wide. Gonzalez brilliantly cut out by Edwards and Port Melbourne can launch another counter attack here. Stokes gives pursuits. And he does well to see it out of play. Owen Stokes, first goal for Port Melbourne five or so minutes ago separates these two teams to what has been a very trying night in front of goal for the Sharks. A missed penalty in the opening two minutes of the match. They hit the woodwork four times. They've had two or three other inexplicable misses. Jesse Barber missed twice from this edge of the six yard boxes and Altona free kick here in midfield. It looks like young Julian Rodriguez is going to be brought on by Goran Lozanovsky. With the 18-year-old, third appearance of the season. He's going to replace Daniel Fabrizio, who's put in a mighty shift for the Magic. And so they have a goal in them. Stachewski. With one football for time being. Baker heads it away. Tracked down by Gust. Did well to get around Burns. Makacha. Gonzalez. Oh, just lost possession. Here come the Sharks. Maybe for the kill. Stokes. Leach. Has his pass deflected. Stokes in on the action again, but loses out to the yellow shirts around him. Ball into the 18-yard box. Baker cleared it. Only as far as O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll somehow has found Uach, who's moved his way out onto the left wing. Closed down by Brooks. Gust comes to lend a hand. Here's Yevchevsky. Lofting one at the back post. O'Driscoll's there again. It falls here. Who's going to take the initiative? It's Gonzalez. Gonzalez, Uach cleared off the line by Latsis. Right spot, right time. For the Port Melbourne right back. And away to safety. Still Altona come. Wave after yellow wave. That pass didn't get past Charlie Leach. Final minutes of the 90. Stachewski for Rezai. Port Melbourne backs against the wall. It's back with Yevchevsky. Stachevsky, the Altona champion. Left football. Pierces all the way through. O'Driscoll. Uach! And in! Altona finds their goal. O'Driscoll is involved. Uach tucks it in. 
Uach scores again. It's his fifth of the season. And Altona, with the one-man advantage, pull that one back and they race back to the middle thinking perhaps now they can go on and win it. Port Melbourne one, Altona one. It felt like that had been coming. Well, that's how difficult it's been to score goals tonight. It ended up being a tap in on the goal line from the man in form for Uach. And here they are again. Looking for Uach once more. Rezai lurking as well. Rodriguez. We enter four minutes of stoppage time at the end of the 90. Is that enough for the Magic to come home and win it? Stachewski. His ball into the box that created that goal. Again looking for O'Driscoll. The header. Lawless was buzzing around. It's away by Baker. Altona haven't won here in 21 years, we remind you. Jovchevsky lofts it in. In at the near post. Marco Giannakis comes out and claims. Of course, that's the other little wrinkle here. Port Melbourne have their reserve goalkeeper between the sticks. Shalomadov, Trankov, red carded earlier in this half. Brooks rolls forward. Looking for the return ball. It was just a little heavy from Stokes. And it's back with Christian Rossi. Altona building out from the last line. Not all that convincingly, I must say. Stachewski. Latsis. O'Driscoll there to keep him honest. Looks like he's been thrown up forward. O'Driscoll. Rezai comes away with the loose ball for Altona. Skips around Karma. Jawad Rezai. Didn't quite hit it as he'd hoped. And Marco Ginakis smothers it and bangs it away. Frantic finish here at JL Murphy. Stokes picks it up. So Port Melbourne are going for the winner as well here. The 10-man Sharks. Burns has played in by Brooks. Goes to the byline. Into the near post. The way by Stachewski. They don't want to concede a corner here. The Magic. That's a great return ball from Rezai. And not so good from Yachevsky, Baker, Brooks. Now it's Charlie Leach. He can't get it in behind. Stachewski in the way. On the turn was Stokes. Burns is there. Burns tucks it in the net. He was offside. And there's some on the far side that didn't know. No goal. That was a mighty finish, I might add, from Lucas Burns. Is there a winner to be had on a goal where, on a night, I should say, where goals have been really hard to come by? Here comes Rezai, second half substitute for the Magic, shooting and whizzing it across the face of goal. Did Marco Giannakis get a touch on it? He did. Rezai with that wicked left boot. It's another corner kick for Altona. Still, they don't send all their numbers up. Having a bit of a bet each way here. One all draw would be a decent result. Swung in by Lawless, looking for O'Driscoll. Rezai finds it. Being watched by Baker, trying to get back onto that left is Rezai. At the byline. Crafts a nice pass in the end for Yevchevsky. Makacha. Altona playing backwards. Back with Stachevsky. Still numbers in the box. It's a long, deep pass that's Headed away by Edwards and out of play. Altona with the throw in. Oh, sloppy pass from Gonzalez. Burns has won back possession. Well done though by McCarcher to win it back. On the right wing, McCarcher gets his head up. Gonzalez. Into the box. Karmas hasn't dealt with it. Duatch chases it down. Still a chance for the Magic. Brooks and Duatch. Uh, Brooks has done well enough to shepherd it out for a goal kick. It's great defending from the second half substitutes. Marco Giannakis with the goal kick. To both sides, they have continued to 
throw punches. The whistle is in the mouth of Noah Langarak. And that'll do it. Both sets of players, both sets of coaches and officials down below us frustrated that they are forced to share the spoils. What an interesting football match. A match that started with a penalty at the first minute for Port Melbourne that Dane Milovanovic put wide. The chances were coming and going for both sides, sprayed left, right and centre. Port Melbourne hit the woodwork four times before they had their goalkeeper, Elia Shalomano Trenkov, sent off. Altona dominated possession for the next five minutes or so, and then Port Melbourne sprung into life. Owen Stokes gave them the lead. The 10-man Port Melbourne did strike first, and then it was a goal-line effort from Ball Juach that was tumbled in, and in the end, perhaps fairly, these two teams share the spoils. So Altona are stuck on one win on the season through seven matches. And Port Melbourne for the second week in a row at home share the points with the opposition. Port Melbourne have back-to-back -back games against Oakley coming up in the Cup and in the league. Altona, meantime, are at home in the Cup next week against the boys from Ballarat, the Sabas Vikings. What an interesting football match that was. Altona's long drought winning here at JL Murphy will tick over another year. But they'll be happy enough to take a point over the other side of the Westgate Bridge and get ready for the rest of the campaign. Thanks for your company this evening, gang. For me, Brent Sternberg, and our cameraman up here that have weathered the windy conditions in Port Melbourne. Very interesting game of football that in the end, and just about everything except a winner, the final score here at JL Murphy Reserve was Port Melbourne 1, Altona Magic 1.